Hey there everyone, as always, welcome to the channel and thanks for stopping by for a few. My name is Rich Charpentier, I'm the channel host, and we're going to jump right into it today. We do a lot of drone work and imaging work, and we've been doing more information on 360 virtual tours recently. As a matter of fact, I've actually built an entire new class on utilizing the Theta Z1 camera from Ricoh, which is a pretty amazing 360 still camera. Now, there's a lot going on with the Theta Z1, and some of it can get a little confusing. So I put together this entire new series, and I wanted to give you a sneak peek into part of the series. So one of the modes that's really fantastic for getting better quality images out of the Theta Z1 is a multi-bracketing mode. Now, the Theta Z1 has a multi-bracketing mode built in, but some industrious folks out there created a plugin for the Theta Z1 called the Dual Fisheye Plugin. What you're seeing on screen is the actual Theta Z1 camera, both front view and side view. One of the interesting things with the Dual Fisheye Plugin is the quickest way to access it and get it set up is actually using the buttons on the camera itself. And we don't have a lot of buttons here, do we? We've got a power button, a wireless button, a mode button and a function button. Yet somehow these folks that created the dual fisheye plugin managed to set it up in a way that you can actually do all the settings on camera. Now Rico offers a fantastic app for connecting to your Theta Z1 camera as well. Um, so they've got the Theta app both for Android and for iOS. One of the problems though is some of the plugins that have been produced you can't use the app, so you have no on-screen view of what you're shooting or how you're setting things up. So in the tutorial that's about to follow, we're actually gonna walk through the steps for setting the dual fisheye plugin up on the camera and then setting it up to shoot scenes for you that you can then put together and edit into higher end 360 images. So we're gonna cut me off momentarily and we're gonna dive right in to that particular lesson on setting up the Z1 with the dual fisheye plugin using just these couple of buttons on the side of the camera. This is one tutorial that's part of a larger tutorial set that I've been developing. And if you wanna see more about that, you can go down into the show description below. There's a link down there for you. And there's also a discount code if you're interested in taking the Theta Z1 class from Arizona Drone. After you see this tutorial, I'll do a little bit of wrap up information for you as well. All right, let's jump right into the tutorial. Remember, you can hit the pause button when you need to so that you go through and get your settings just right for your first use of the dual fisheye plugin. All right, here we are again, everyone. And this time we're taking a close look at the Theta Z1. So on screen, you can see the Theta Z1 and you can see its little informational panel. So this panel doesn't tell us too much, but one thing to keep in mind, we do have several buttons on the right hand side of this particular camera. So at the top right, we have the power button. The next button down is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The the button after that is the mode button. And finally, we have a function button. So these buttons do various things in various modes. But what we're interested in talking about for the purposes of this video is the dual fisheye plugin. So the dual fisheye plugin allows us to do bracketed shots as well, similar to multi-bracket, but they offer a couple of additional features. One of those features is creating an HDR DNG, which is a very interesting compilation of your multi-brackets. You actually take multiple photos with the dual fisheye plugin. When the plugin is done, when you're done capturing your scene, it actually takes those layers and puts them together into what they call an HDR DNG. So how do we get into the dual fisheye plugin? Well, number one, over on the right hand side, I'm going to hold the mode button in for just a couple of seconds. And I just want you to be able to see that on screen now. I held the mode button in for several seconds and it says plug in. Next to that, we've got one, two, and three because we can have up to three plugins on the camera. 
This one is the dual fisheye plugin. And if we would like to say OK to use this one, we're going to hit the shutter button. If we're trying to get to a different plugin mode, we'd hit the mode button. But we're on the right screen, so I put the dual fisheye plugin first in my plugins, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the shutter button to get us into the dual fisheye plugin. Now you will see that it says dual fisheye plugin, and below that, JPEG single. So that's for a single image taken with the dual fisheye plugin. Number one, I want to use our raw DNGs. So on the right hand side, bottom button, I'm going to click the function button. And now that gets us into a DNG single. So one single photo that's going to be raw. And that would just be one single snap. We're not going to go with that. We've got several other functions available to us. Instead of hitting the function button, I'm going to hit the mode button again. And now the mode button is telling me that we're going to do a DNG bracket with three shots. So we do an overexposed, underexposed, and properly exposed. So the bracket is one. I'm going to go in here again, and I'm going to click the mode button again. And this one is DNG burst for a faster series of three shots. I'm going to hit the mode button again. And here we go. This is the HDR DNG. So if I were to use this mode, the HDR DNG is going to take three photos, and then it's going to merge them together as an HDR DNG. Now, I would like to actually have more um, images than that. So I'm going to go up and lightly click on the Wi-Fi button. And I clicked it once, and now we have HDR DNG 5. So it's going to take five brackets, seven or nine. So I'd like to do a DNG bracket of 9, but I wanted to use that HDR mode. So let's see here, DNG burst and HDR DNG, and it's going to shoot 9 frames. Now we've got one more problem here, and that problem is that we're not going to be able to run out of the room fast enough. In this mode on the camera, we're not controlling anything from our iPhone or Android, so that's kind of problematic. How do we get this to take a photo and get us out of the scene? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the Wi-Fi button and hold it in longer. So I held it in just a couple of seconds, and now we're set up for an HDR DNG that's going to take nine brackets, underexposed to overexposed. It's going to smush them all together, and it's going to create this specialized file called an HDR DNG. When you pull this file into Lightroom, you will notice some major differences with the image and how we're going to be editing it. So when you first look at an HDR DNG that you've brought in from the Dual Fisheye plugin, I wouldn't fault you at all if you were a little skeptical as to the uh, output that you're going to get because it looks extremely dark. But it actually builds all of these different files into the HDR DNG and gives you a huge amount of flexibility on brightening things, bringing exposure up, bringing highlights down. And we're going to take a much closer look at that on screen together next. But so if I wanted to go ahead and do this right now, now that I have the setup for the dual fisheye plugin, I've got the HDR DNG and I decided to go for nine shots with it. And I've got a 10 second timer to get out of the way. All I have to do now is go up to the shutter button, click on that shutter button, and I've got 10 seconds to run out of the room and uh, make room for the shooting. So what we'll do next in this section is we'll actually bring in those HDR DNGs. We're going to import them from the Theta Z1, and we're going to put them into Lightroom. And when we take a look at them in Lightroom, even though I bracketed a bunch of brackets, it gives me one original image and the HDR DNG. So it doesn't even give me all nine of those brackets. It gives me this finalized merged HDR DNG. Now, when we were looking back at this, we could go back to the HDR DNG and change it just to a regular bracket. If we were to change it to a regular bracket, and let's say we took nine shots, it will give us nine images when we import them and it won't give us a combined image. So, all right, one other thing I'm going to do here. So I'm going to click the mode button again. 
just to show you. So I click the mode button once and we've got a DNG single photo for 10 second timer. The next item when we hit that mode button again, there's our DNG bracket three um, and a 10 second timer. Now if I want to make that into nine, I'm going to go up and lightly click on the Wi-Fi button to five, seven, and nine. And that was with the Wi-Fi button. So now we've got a DNG bracket of nine images. So we'd be importing nine images to Lightroom. And then we've got our 10 second timer to get out of Dodge. I'm going to hit the mode one more time. And there's DNG burst. So if we wanted to do a faster series of nine, I haven't experimented with this too much and I'm not quite sure what situations I'd want to use it in, but you might want to try it out. Finally, I'm going to click that mode button again. And there we go, the HDR DNG, nine brackets with 10 seconds to run out of the room. And as I said, it's going to give us one original image and then the HDR DNG that we can actually work with and edit. So in the next video, we're actually going to take a look at some of these HDR DNGs and we're going to do some editing with them. And I'll be sure to include a couple of these so that you can experiment with them in Lightroom as well to do edits and see how you like the HDR DNG smushed together file that the dual fisheye plugin gives us. Now to get out of this mode, I'm just going to go over again and hold on the mode button for a couple of seconds. And now that I've done that, it's got us back into our plugins and I use the mode button to select on through remote control and then exit the plugin. I click the shutter button and we have exited the plugin. Now, once again, I just have to repeat to you. So using this particular uh, plugin, the dual fisheye plugin is a more manual process and you're not getting feedback to your phone or smart device. They do have a new remote triggering plugin from the folks who put together the dual fisheye plugin, but we still can't see what's happening on screen. So the big difference here between the multi-bracketing mode that comes with the Ricoh Theta that we can actually control on our screen versus the dual fisheye plugin, we don't have as much access via our smartphone screen using the Theta app. So when you're planning to use the dual fisheye plugin, you need to keep in mind that you're not controlling a lot of this through your phone. So it's doing all these little manual steps and pressing the uh, buttons on the side screen um, to go through the different modes and features of these plugins. So that's something to keep in mind. And I'm sure down the road, they're gonna continue improving this app because a lot of people are using it. And um, a lot of people are getting great results from the dual fisheye plugin. My first few experiments with it, I was not satisfied. But I will be honest with you and I'll say, now that I've uh, looked around a little more at how other people are using it and what we can do with it, I'm finding that it might be a very good way to actually get um, some of your higher end 360 images for let's say interiors like a home for sale or you know, maybe an interesting public location or a gallery or something, you know, that we can get more out of the Ricoh Theta Z1 by either using the multi-bracket or using the dual fisheye. I'm gonna leave it up to you to make your determinations as to what you like better. Also, the dual fisheye is making some automatic decisions for us like things like white balance, as when we were using the multi-bracket, we were setting the actual color temperature manually so we could see that on screen and we could make our decisions ourselves. In the case of the dual fisheye plugin, it's doing some automated things for us, including setting white balance. So it takes a little bit of our control away, but that final file with the range that it has for editing is pretty incredible. And you might be able to get just what you want out of it. So in the next video, we're actually gonna take a look at a couple of HDR DNGs, see what they look like when they come out of the Ricoh Theta Z1, and then see what goes into editing them and why you might want to use this. Also, keep in mind, when it does that HDR DNG merge, it's saving us some drive space as well. Instead of having those nine bracketed photos, we've got one original DNG and the HDR DNG. So we've only got two, uh, two images for each scene being imported. So that does save us some disk space. So if, uh, if you're doing a lot of shots, a lot of higher end shots, maybe you're doing a much larger building, for instance, 
getting those HDR DNGs merged together might be what you're looking for. So all right, let's go back to the computer and take a look at this together and see what kind of editing we can do with an HDR DNG produced by the Dual Fisheye plugin. Okay, so that was one of the lectures from my new series on the Theta Z1. And the entire series is available over on teachable.com. It's az-drone.teachable.com. And I'm just scrolling through the, um, the actual landing page for that one. So we don't just talk about the Dual Fisheye plugin in this particular series. We actually go through just about everything on the Theta Z1. And it's kind of necessary. So there are a lot of videos out on YouTube, absolutely. And they all cover different components of the Theta Z1. But I wanted a place where beginners could come and start utilizing their Theta Z1 and learning about it from the basics up to the more complex setups, like using something like the Dual Fisheye plugin. So for the course itself, you can actually go over to the course page and you can give it a read. And you can also check out a couple of additional lectures. So the first couple of lectures are available to everybody. And it's just introducing the Theta Z1 and introducing some of the simple concepts with it. Now, a lot of what drives the Theta Z1 is a smartphone and tablet app um, for the Theta. And it's available on both Android and iOS. But since Rico has made this camera pretty flexible and able to take other plugins in, you can also download other plugins um, from the web. And some of those plugins don't interface as well with the app. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you're moving forward with the Theta Z1. But as you can see, we do have a lot of actual lessons on this. So there's several hours of content and material including putting together a simple 360 tour with some of the low end settings on the Theta Z1. And then further on down, as you see, we do get into that dual fisheye plugin and we talk about editing our HDR DNGs as well generated by it. So go ahead and check the class out. I hope that that uh, lesson there on setting up the dual fisheye plugin was useful for you as well. Because let me tell you, when I first started trying it out, it was a little confusing, so hopefully in this class series, it gets clarified better for you and you can make more use of your Theta Z1. All right, thanks for stopping in and checking out the video and checking out the tutorial. I hope it was enjoyable and we'll see you again real soon here on channel. Don't forget every Monday at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, we do a live stream here and questions and comments are always welcome as well. So I look forward to seeing you on an upcoming live stream as well.